Hi there VC, it's Steve Whitty here, time for another video. Um, I hope everybody is good and have had a good week. Um, this video is a response to one that Richard McCook posted last week. Now Richard, um, I think we've got, you know, we're, we're, we're well, I think of similar age and, um, and have sort of similar tastes in music. Very prolific, but posts really great videos. It's been, um, coming up to two years now since he's been, been on, on, on the VC. But anyway, he posted the video last week. Um, 60 singles compilation. Show some of your favourite 60 songs, 60 singles. I've seen a couple of replies. I've seen Chris the Vinyl Orchard and I've seen John Six Inch Pianist do their, uh, post their responses. So I'm going to post mine, my response. So here I am, armed with a little singles box. Um... They're not in any particular order. They're not in any particular genre. They just, when I thought about it, I didn't think too hard. I just thought the 60 singles that I got that I really liked. I've got quite, you can see three boxes behind me. I've got three boxes in front of me. I've got three boxes to my left. And I've got some more singles that I've got. I've been sorting out singles, actually. I didn't realise I'd got so many. Sorting out my duplicates and whatever. Um, and find, find a home for them. So... I do love the 7 inch single. It was the how I got got into music by music, um, so it that does hold a special place. I know some people don't like it, and not particularly fans because I think it just takes a lot of space. But nothing better than having a night just playing 45s. Anyhow, I digress. So number one is always a starting point with me, and I'll always show this as sort of like the first single. It's Keith West excerpt from a teenage opera. This was released in 1967 and made number two in the charts. Um, reason, um, apparently this is my, how I got dragged into the the murky world of music. Um, this ca If you don't know the song, it's a song about a, I think a milkman, grocer man. Uh, old, old, doesn't wake up for his, um, for his round, has a heart attack, dies. Um. And the family send the kids to wake him up. So it's you hear the song, the children sing, Grosser Jack, Grosser Jack. Yeah, and um, and um, that's how, of course, I, I've been only about two at the time, picked up on that and started singing some. My mum always used to tease me when this came on the radio. We used to sing along to that. Talking of my mum, her favourite artist was Cliff. And I suppose this is my favourite Cliff's. Um, single, The Young Ones. This was released in 1962, reached number one in the charts. It was the lead song from the film that he made um, called The Young Ones. Um, so Cliff, or Sir Cliff as he, as he should, be, should be known now, um, was British, Britain's, Elvis, uh, Britain's answer to Elvis. Um, our first, you know, we had Tommy Steele, um, but um, I think for a lot of people, Cliff, he was young. I mean, he, I mean, he's only just recently celebrated his 80th birthday. He's still around. Um, but he, he he made his films as well, like Elvis. And I'd have to say, some of things like Summer Holiday and Young Ones were better films than what Elvis did. Um, now going off kilter slightly, one of my, another one of my favourite 60s, uh, Alan Price set Simon Smith and the Amazing Dancing Bear, Randy Newman song. It was how Randy Newman got introduced in the UK. Alan Price had um, left the Animals and set up his own band, the Alan Price set. Um, this reached number four in 1967. Um, other hit singles he had as the Alan Price set, Don't Stop the Carnival, um, was, the, was, the, was the number one. Um, yeah, it's just a really uplifting song. Um, not a short song, but it's I just find it really uplifting. As it says, it was the introduction to the world for for Britain for Randy Newman. I requested this to be played on Six Music yesterday, and they ignored me. <laughs> a bit of drum rock, pop, pop, the move. I can hear the grass grow. Just absolutely shows off the wonders how great. Um, Roy Wood is. Um, this is when the band was the the five piece, um, and you got Roy Wood, Ace Kefford, and 
Carl Wayne all prov uh, providing bits of vocals on this by far my favourite move song uh, released in 1967 again re reached number 5 um, if you hear this Ford do a great version of this um uh, Next up, Eamon Corner, Corner, Ben Me Shake Me, um, released in 1968, released, released number three, Andy Fairweather Low, he was the vocalist on the band, I think also in the band was a guy who went on to manage, um, initially manage um, Guns N' Roses, but correct me if I'm wrong, I usually am, um, yeah, another uplifting tune. I love a bit of cheesy pop, and the Archie's Sugar Sugar represents that for me. Um, number one, 1969, sort of um, Don Kirshner, um, bruised and battered by his experience with the monkeys, how they turned on him, decided to make the ultimate band he could control, and it was a cartoon band, the song Sugar Sugar, worldwide hit. Um, possibly really my first memory of watching the cartoon video on top of the pops performing sugar sugar so um uh, andy kim co-wrote this and he um he also um provided some of the back course he did have it with rock me gently um england world cup 1966 and uh, not england world cup squad of 1970 do a good ver not bad version of this on their album next Released in 1968, reaching number two. This is Barry Ryan, Eloise. This is a reissue. Um, um, written by his brother Paul. Um, real over the top production um, about a guy obsessed with a striptease artist. Um, yeah, it's just really good. It, this was the peak of Barry Ryan's career. He went on to become a photographer. The song gained legs again in 1986 when the Damned did their released their cover version of it. I'm surprised there would be a Beatles song in, uh, single in here. And Paperback Writer's my favourite Beatles single. Um, released in 1966, went to number one. I've breezed, I chose this because it's backed up by the really impressive rain. Blood, Sweat and Tears. Um, spinning Wheel. Now, Blood, Sweat and Tears... Uh, this was released in 69. I don't think, actually, I can't find any evidence that it had been a hit single in the UK. Um, I'm sure it was, because it was played to death. I know You Make Me So, so Very Happy was a hit for for the band. Um, but I can't find any evidence of this. I just love this. Uh, I love that, that music. I mean, the album, Blood, Sweat and... T uh, uh, the album it comes from is absolutely wonderful. Yeah, so... Traffic, Paper Sun, um, great bit of slab of a uh, psych pop, um, written by um, Traffic, produced by Jimmy Miller, um, Steve Wynn, it's a sort of a Birmingham super group, Steve Wynn had, had left them, um, Spencer Davis, Jim Capaldi, um, Dave Mason, Chris Wood, absolutely wonderful. You might... Uh, prick your, uh, turn your eyes up at this one this is the casuals jessamine i just love this song it's just a beautiful ballad um a bit of a one-hit wonder um reached number two in 1968 um i know when we growing up in the local pub that was on the jukebox and um if we if we were well or we'd put this on an end of night singing along to this so it does bring back some good memories Cream, sunshine of your love, uh, heck of a riff uh, on on heck of a riff or uh, uh, opening riff on there. Um, I believe it wasn't originally released as single. Then I've got down here. It did reach twenty number twenty five in nineteen sixty eight. It wasn't a great set, set, big selling single, um, and I think this got re released just as the time the band had split up. So all going to split up. Next, 
Dave D, Bozy, Beaky, Mick and Titch. All tight. I think this is their debut single um, from 1966, which reached number three in the charts. Um, great fuzz guitar that opens this. Uh, it, is, it is standard manufactured pop, but just great. Um, Dave D, Dave Beaky, Mick and Titch had, went on to have a few... Uh, run of hits for a couple of years up to 68 where the legend of Xanadu reached number one Dave D left the band he went on to become he presented Beat Club on, in, on the German uh, music program for a couple of years and then went on to be a like, music exec uh, before he passed away um, Donovan Hurdy Gurdy Man find this song I imagine I'd have been about when this was released in 1968 if I heard this I'd have been running for the um for behind the um, sofa reach number four it's quite it is quite a eerie song um with the sort of like the guitar in there and the pen and the drums absolutely wonderful stuff and uh, Donovan I think to me represents his um musical pe uh, creative peak Easy Beats Friday on my mind. This is just a joyous celebration of the fact that the weekend is coming. Um, written by Vander and Young. Easy Beats had come over from Australia, Australia's biggest band. And they, um, by, but they, 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 they tried for a while and then they just come across this song. And this was their biggest hit worldwide. It never got as good for, for them as this again for them. Holly's, um, my favourite Holly single, Look Through Any Window, written by Graham Goldman, or part, uh, part co-written by Graham Goldman. Um, this, again, Holly's crafted, they, they do get underlooked sometimes in the VC, because they crafted some really great singles, um, very much a singles band, never an album band, much to the frustration of Graham Nash, because I think he, want, he, could, he, he wanted to be part of the in crowd, and I think... Um, the band, the band knew which side their bread was buttered in. Really. The rest of the band, you know, they were hit singles. Yeah, they'll do the sort of like they were they were veering towards the cabaret circuit at the time, which was where a lot of bands went after their um, careers finished. You're gonna have to excuse the state of this next one. This is possibly my um, my favourite um, Motown single. It's the Isley Brothers behind a painted smile. Oh. I forgot. I've actually forgot to mention about the Easy Beats reaching number six in '66 and look through any windows number four, 1965. Isley Brothers, uh, behind a painted smile, number five in 1969. As I said, my favourite Motown single. You've got the mournful um, opening, sort of like the, cla the, the very classical opening, and then you go into this song about a guy that's. It's going, going, singing about. Well, I'm smile. I may be smiling, but in, inside I'm hurting, and it just goes on the song. And then you just got that drum at the end that it just it just rounds it off perfectly. Possibly one of the most important um, singles ever to be released in the UK. Apache by the Shadows, released in 1960, reached number one. Um. This was the gave the, the, it was the Shadows' first number one. This launched a load of uh, guitarists. It wasn't so much the the guitar; it was also the guitar they were playing. Hank Marvin, the Shadows were Cliff Richard's backing band, and Cliff had managed to import a Fender Stratocaster. It was the first Fender Stratocaster ever imported into this country, the Pink Strat. It's iconic, um, and then. It, and then t t with the studio, it just it just sung. It, it's just a, the opening opening notes of Apache is just I think probably the most important notes in British music. The guitarists or like Brian May, Eric Clapton, all the guitarists that went on, on there. That that song influenced them. And it also showed because Hank Marvin wore glasses, a bit like he looked like Buddy Holly. That you didn't have to look like a teenage idol to be in a band. I think this is the 19th one. 
This is the Kinks Waterloo Sunset, released in 1967, a number two hit. Um, by far the best single that Kinks ever put out. Um, just that it just t tells a tale of London, two lovers in London, um, Terry and Ju 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 Judith. Um, supposed to be based on uh, Terence um, Stamp and I think oh what's Shrimpton what's her, what's her first name the model I've forgotten their first name um, they were a couple at the time you know Jean Shrimpton or something like that I don't know, correct me again if I'm wrong but that's what the song was about and then finally I've gone for the Mersey's Sorrow um, again released in 1966 reached number four in the charts um, offshoot of the Mersey Beat, produced by Kit Bambert. Um, wonderful song again. Song about uh, sadness, but really uplifting. Um, famously covered by Bowie on his Pinups album. So Bowie was a big fan of this song. So there you go, VC. Those are the my twenty sing. Uh, I've just decided to choose twenty singles. Leave a little bit of room on the um, compilation CD. Um, so. Um, so Hope you liked what I've shown. Um, if you're new to the channel and you like what you um, see, um, click on the subscribe button. I actually it's been a bit there, miss. I haven't really recently forgot, um, thanked my new subscribers. I've had a bit of a spike. You normally do this year on top of the vinyl tag um, video. So thank you, everyone who's newly subscribed. Thumbs up, thumbs down. Love the interaction. Feel free to leave a comment. I will get back to you. Now, whatever you get up to, VC, today, Make sure it's a good one. Um, look after yourselves. Keep spinning. More importantly, keep on smiling.